Hi everyone, welcome to Pens and Needles. So today I'm really excited to go over the 280 Sailor Studio ink, which is right here. Um, I was really excited when I saw some images of the different chromo shading techniques that you can use with this ink. So I decided to get myself a bottle for the holidays and I'm gonna do a couple ink tests on Muji paper and Tomoe River paper, see how it works on those papers, how it writes. And then I'm going to do a pH test and we're gonna see if it's safe for vintage pens. All right, let's get to it. So here I have freshly cleaned out my Twisby and my Pilot 91. Okay, so let's fill this up. This is a cute little bottle. Wow, okay, so we've got some instructions here showing you how to fill it up. Oh, I see there's, there's stickers. So the color on the front doesn't look too exciting. It's like a sort of tan color, khaki tan. But I've seen some really pretty shading options with this. Now inside the bottle, it's clearly green. So we'll see how this goes. Fairly full fill. You can still see the bubble. It's pretty nice in there. Here we go. This is my first Sailor Studio ink, but I am hoping it will be similar to the Sailor Manio Haha. All right, so I just have some uh, creamy Muji paper here. So we can draw out a little bit. All right, so it looks like a nice gentle green in the fine and the broad nib. Couldn't find a Q-tip today, so I'm using a paintbrush. It, this is stained, but it has been cleaned many times. I'm hoping we can get some of these cool effects. And it's already splitting. That's really cool. So you can see I've done a little swatch with my paintbrush here of the 280. It filled up my Twisby and my Pilot. And I have my Tomoe River paper here. I wanted to show you that this is white Tomoe River paper, according to the notepad. It says Tomoe River white. Um, <laughs> but the color is a bit creamy. So just keep that in mind for past and future ink reviews. Um, this is just some bad uh, print paper that came in the mail. Let's test out on the Tomoe River paper. Maybe we can get some more interesting swatches here. I think color, for, oh wow, you can see already, this is a lot faster than on the Muji paper. The colors are separating out here. You can get some of that pink and that light green that's really nice. So this quote, the full quote is, I think unconscious bias is one of the hardest things to get at. Um, it's actually a bit of a story, so I'm gonna read off the full quote for you. I think unconscious bias is one of the hardest things to get at. My favorite example is the symphony orchestra. When I was growing up, there were no women in orchestras. Auditioners thought they could tell the difference between a woman playing and a man. Some intelligent person devised a simple solution. Drop a curtain between the auditioners and the people trying out. And lo and behold, women began to get jobs in symphony orchestras. So I'm gonna 
take a whack at this. I don't know how well this will come out. But really, the drawings are not supposed to be works of great renowned art. They're more to show how the ink works, how it behaves. Oh wow, this is just really fantastic, these colors up here. Okay, how do I do this without smearing <laughs> what I've already drawn? So I actually used to play the flute. Fun fact. I went to university because I wanted to be a orchestra performer. And uh, one of my teachers told me that I had no chance, <laughs> basically. They said I was so bad at playing that I should not even try to be a teacher. Um, which, you know, you use different skills for teaching than you do for performing, so I was a little upset by that. Um, and I ended up running out of credits, and that's how I got an art history degree. So this is looking gorgeous on this Tomoe River paper. I I can't look at these colors. I can't even <laughs> cannot even explain. This is a fantastic. Um, yeah, in terms of chromo shading, I think this is the most impressive ink that I have to achieve that. And what I was really pleased with is that in the drawings as well, sometimes you get the chromo shading in the big swabs of ink, but you don't necessarily get it um, elsewhere. And you can see it in the fine line as well as in the thick line. Okay, well while we let that dry, I'm going to get started on the other page, which is from my Muji dot pad. You can buy these online. They're a very affordable price, so if you're at all considering it, I would definitely recommend it. I was starting to have doubts about the Tomoe River paper before this ink. I just, I mean, just look at the difference between these two. Like this is was green, clearly green, and the letters are clearly green, and then it turns into this purpley pink. Oh gosh, I don't know if that's gonna show up. Just incredible. All right, I'll let that dry. So because this paper is more absorbent, I'm noticing it's, when I'm putting it down, it's not really pooling in quite the same way as it on the other paper. So we might not get quite as many pinks. That's okay. All right, so here you can see them side by side, and it is just incredible how different they look. I mean, the, the pinks and reds in this are, are just, they really pop. You know, you almost notice that before you see the base green that it started with. Whereas over here, you do still get a lot of that warm khaki green, and there's only kind of hints that there are other colors. It really does absorb in. I do notice though, and I'll try to get the camera to show this up, that on the edging of the letters, you have some difference in color that is noticeable and does look quite nice. This is still drying. The 
Yeah, you can see it a lot more. It's almost like an outline that forms. I know this one is still drying. <laughs> so these might take quite a while to dry. Okay, so we've done our chromatography and the tests on the Muji paper and Tomoe River paper. Now we need to do the pH test. I've got some jars here. I've got my calibration fluids and I have my um, amazing pH meter. I've got my DI water here. I'm gonna pour it into this jar. If I want to be super, super duper fancy, I would pour some of my um, some of my ink into a separate container and sample out of that, but I'm being a little lazy today. So let me get the paper towels, rinse off that water, and we will move forward. So dry. And we're gonna put it in a 280 solution. Mix it up a little bit so that that ink is getting all over the sensor and we're going to wait until the temperature stabilizes. And this is reading as 8.6 at 65.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Pop it in here. See what this reads as. Smiley face popped up right away. I don't know if you can see the display screen at all. It's been hard to catch on camera. It's pretty. It's pretty light. So we're getting eight point six at sixty-five point seven degrees Fahrenheit, fairly consistently. Let's try this again. Well, it's 8.6 right now. It's 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll give it a few more minutes just to make sure it is not going to change temperature or numbers or anything like that. No, it is solidly set. Wow. Now it's interesting that here it's green and brown, right? But on the Tomoe River paper, it was green and pink. I do think that, that that red that we saw in the chromatography is pink. Could cause some staining on older clear acrylics. So just be mindful of that. That's another reason it's good to do a chromatography. You would have guessed that there'd be red in a green ink. And if you hadn't tested it on Tomoe River paper, you might not have ever seen this. All right, so we got 8.6, three times in a row, excellent. So this ink is a pH of 8.6, which means it's slightly alkaline. Um, it's not the worst, but it's, you know, maybe not the best for your vintage pens for that rubber sack. It's going to start to deteriorate a little faster than more acidic ink or neutral ink. Um, and it also has that pink stripe. So if you have a vintage pen with a clear acrylic, that it will be in contact with, then that red ink might, that red part of the ink might stain slightly. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not an expert on how red inks stain, if all red inks stain, or if just some of them do, but I do know that it is a problem in some red inks. So just be aware of that if you're experimenting with different inks in your vintage pens. 
Um, all right, I am super excited with this 280 ink and I really want to try using it in drawing and art and I'm really looking forward to it. It was a really, really great surprise to see how different it is on the Muji paper and the Tomoe River paper. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in my next episode. If you haven't already, please comment, subscribe, share this channel with your friends and um, that will help us keep growing and sharing fountain pen knowledge with everyone. All right, bye.